Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, eight months later. <laughs> yeah, so I've been gone a while, you know, a lot going on in the personal life, work, all that nonsense. I will admit I didn't think my videos would get as many views as some of them did, and I wasn't really prepared on how to move forward after getting a few ideas out of my head. But luckily I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about what else I can do to move this channel forward, especially given the growing and noticeable interest in the city planning realm of discussion online. I want to continue posting videos that can be used as an area of discussion and promotion of good city planning because it's quite literally how we live our daily lives, and I think therefore it's something really important to be concerned about. But of course, I have read the comments on my videos. I get notifications on my phone every day seeing what people say, so believe me, I see them. A lot of people comment about how depressed I sound and how mundane my presentation is, which I will assure you makes me laugh out loud nearly every time. Well. By laugh out loud, I mean blow some air through my nose and smile, but yeah. I can assure you I'm not depressed. Rather, the video topics I discuss are things that do indeed depress me. The modern state of American city planning is rather depressing. There's no way around saying that. But anyway, not another rant. Let's just cut to the chase. So you might notice I'm playing a game in the background. This game, in case you're unfamiliar, is a city building simulator called City Skylines. It's quite possibly the best simulator ever created. And for me and many others, we're starting to see it not as just a game, but something we can use to study city planning and provide images for ideas we might only have in our heads. This is the way I want to take this channel forward. I understand that looking at Google Maps images while I drone on about how bad American city planning is might not be the most appealing thing. So I wanted to provide an entertaining backdrop while still providing useful discussion in the realm. What I'm thinking is something like this where I undergo an urban planning related challenge in the game while discussing real world issues. Or not. I don't know. Depends on the week, I guess. So what I've decided to do is undertake a interesting challenge here. Uh, basically what I want to do is create a city that entirely is independent from personal cars. Yeah, no cars at all. Uh, I'm not really sure if this is possible, but I guess we're going to find out. So. What I'm going to do is kind of create like a little train station thing here uh, just to kind of get into the city from the outskirts. Um, I'm not counting this as part of the city, by the way, but uh, the rules for this challenge, they're going to be pretty simple. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's the only rule. I mean, I'm obviously going to allow like taxis, buses, police cars, all that stuff. Uh, I'm not saying like no motorized vehicles whatsoever. Um, I mean, that's, you know, it's something that obviously in the game you kind of need for it to function. And I, you know, I do want it to be a functional city. Uh, so just making a little train station here to get into the city. And once we get into the city, however, I'm not going to allow any personal cars whatsoever. These areas out here, like the highways that lead into the train station and whatnot, are going to be sort of the only areas where you'll see personal cars hopefully. Uh, that's the plan at least. So while I do this, I'll just kind of let it go and I'll get back to you here once I finish this up. Okay, so I lied. I actually want to give a life update to prove I'm practicing what I preach. So I used to live in an insufferably boring suburb. Well, actually I have for most of my life but I decided to move downtown to the nearby city I live in. And you don't have to be a detective to know that I live in the Twin Cities of Minnesota, but I won't go more specific than that for like personal reasons and stuff. But let's just say that I live downtown now and I haven't even driven a car in like five months or so, somehow, but it is possible clearly. It's actually really nice. I live right by a grocery store, tons of bars and restaurants, and I can walk to my gym as well. There's plenty of trails and nice walks by the local river, and all in all, it's just been a really great time. I'm really proving to myself, and hopefully to others, how good this sort of car-free lifestyle can be. I found myself getting into tons of random ch chance encounters, socializing with people, and even making new friends. I can see an interesting shop or building and just walk in without having to worry about the predatory parking costs associated with a big city. It's much better for my health. I don't feel stressed or rushed at all when walking somewhere. And it's overall something I'm really happy about. Really would recommend it if it's something you're considering. So without further ado, I wanted to bring in the sort of practical side of this video. I wanted to discuss an article that I saw lately. 
Uh, it's a local article about how the city passed a resolution to remove a highway on the north side of the city of Minneapolis, which has divided the community for a while. This is the headline right here. Passed a resolution to remove the highway on the north side and remove, uh, restore 6th Avenue North. And here's a little picture of what it looks like. As you can see, it uh, definitely guts through the city in a kind of weird way. You can tell that, you know, there was a neighborhood there. And it's just, you know, there's just this giant highway now. And that's something I've been really vocal about in some of my other videos that I thought was just a really bad idea from the get-go. I mean... Highways are supposed to connect you from one place to another, uh, and specifically from one city to another, I think, is the best way to go about that. And having them just gut straight through what used to be, you know, a connected neighborhood is something that I've never supported. And it just, you know, looking at it now, maybe in the past, it's something that we might not have considered, but looking at it now we can see plainly that it's just not a good idea. And, you know, especially concerning safety and other things. I mean, just as a pedestrian, you just, there's really no desire to cross something like this where you have cars going at such high speeds. You know, there's definitely fatalities and injuries and such associated with things like this. And I think it's really good that we're starting to realize that and starting to realize that we can actually reverse the mistakes that we've made in the past and look towards building better cities in the future where we don't have these giant highways running through the middle of them. You know, if you haven't really thought about it, just look at my video of how highways destroy cities. I actually look at the Twin Cities in particular as one of the examples of just how much space these highways actually take up. And I mean, they're just not good at all. I mean, they're just bottlenecks their environmental hazards, their safety hazards, you know, they just serve to kind of detract from what space we could use for much better things. So I think this is a really good step forward. So I'll read something from the article here. So according to the resolution, the city supports the Minnesota Department of Transportation's immediate plans to improve safety and pedestrian access. Those changes include reducing and narrowing the travel lanes, added dedicated transit and bike lanes, improving pedestrian lighting, and increasing the number of crossing locations. So we'll touch on some of these things here. So the first is reducing and narrowing the travel lanes. So, you know, long, wide lanes, they encourage speeding, they encourage unsafe traffic behaviors. And you might think, oh, you know, I don't speed, I follow the speed limit. Yeah, well, guess what? There's always going to be some crazy kids who don't. And all it takes is one of them to lose control, and then boom, you know, car versus person at high speeds. It doesn't end well. I'll just put it that way. Uh, dedicated transit in the, is another one that's interesting. There's been quite a lot of discussion here, at least, about transit. You know, we have the light rail system that has been here a number of years now. Uh, there's all sorts of interesting things about that. I don't want to get too much into it, but they are planning to add like a whole nother uh, line for that that goes to different parts of the metro area so that's uh that's a whole nother topic but obviously not just light rail um buses we actually have a pretty interesting bus system here interesting in the sense that well again another long story but let's, i mean it's not bad like it, it has a lot of routes it has a lot of potential i would say and then of course bike lanes is something that's really big we actually have pretty good good bike lanes like in the city itself like downtown and certain areas but of course you know once you get farther and farther out they get less and less and i mean again i made another video about that from one of our local suburbs where they're just basically non-existent and they suck pretty hard so that's always something good to prioritize because you know the the talking point lately and you might have seen this on social media is just that biking is seen by some as an illegitimate form of transportation. You know, some commentators have advocated for even removing bike lanes from roads, which, I mean, I'm not even going to comment on how stupid that is. But basically, the important thing to note here is that biking is a legitimate form of transportation. And if we maintain bike lanes year round and have them in the same condition that roads are, it'll encourage more and more people to bike and have an alternative method of transportation that doesn't cost them thousands and thousands of dollars to do. 
you know, it doesn't disadvantage them because they don't want to spend a ton of money on a car. You know, you can buy a bike for 50 bucks or whatever and, and get around just as good. So this is something I'm really happy to see how much we've been prioritizing this lately. And then, of course, pedestrian safety. Uh, like I said, you don't want to walk across a highway where cars are speeding by you and whatnot. So, and that's just kind of a basic thing. And lighting, uh, you know, safety in other ways. So that's, this is good. So obviously, the thing that sucks about these sorts of things is that they take years and years and years to actually put into practice. So, you know, this isn't slated until 2028, which, I mean, all things considered, isn't that far away. But uh, I think what they want to do is kind of, the things in the paragraph above are like immediate things they can do. But I think the long-term goal is to just get rid of the highway altogether which this thing is in its very early stages and it's very infancy. So we'll see kind of what that means going forward. But we have seen a lot of these sorts of things being discussed, not just locally for me, but also uh, around the country and even in other countries. I mean, we've seen tons of examples of just what used to be former highways demolished and replaced with something much better. I won't really reference any of them here because I'm sure you've seen them before, but uh, I can say at the very least locally, there's been a growing discussion. And I think more and more people are realizing just how much of a mistake these sorts of highways were. And so I, I think it's really great to see attention brought to them. And hopefully we can restore communities and make our cities more livable places in the process. So, you know, it's something that's going to take years, but it's uh, one step at a time. And at the very least, we can get people thinking about them and get their minds open to the sorts of things. And we'll go from there, you know, and see what happens. So that's kind of my little, uh, you know, reality tidbit of the video here. But I do want to kind of focus this video on kind of the city's challenge that I'm doing here. So we'll just leave it at that. Feel free to discuss this in the comments below. I think it's something that's uh, it's got a really interesting discussion attached to it. Tell me kind of what you think. Maybe if there's any sorts of things where you live where this is being talked about. Any uh, examples that you've seen from anywhere in the world where this has been done successfully, feel free to reference that. I think this is something that's a really good step towards realizing uh, better cities. So, yeah. All right. So, let's talk the city itself. So, it's called Ironwood. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just a generic name. But basically, what I've done is kind of made a train station from the outskirts that goes into the city. And as you can see, people are actually starting to use it. Uh, not sure how this car got in here. We're going to work on that. Don't worry. That person's going to be arrested and sent to prison for life. And we'll never hear about it again. So, oh, I think there's a, yeah, I see. Just need to ban cars on the roads that I just created going into this. Doesn't apply. Yeah, I, I clicked apply to the whole thing. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so there's a train station coming in here. And that's going to be, well, for now, the only way to get into the city. I'll probably look into adding some bus lines or something like that going down the line. You know, I'll probably make an airport far away at some point and then connect that to the city as well, either via train or bus or whatever it is. So, but I kind of just created some, I just wanted to get some people in the city. So it's not the prettiest looking apartment block area, but I just kind of wanted to plop a few down, get some people kind of in here. And so I wanted to look at the policies because I know there's some interesting ones that relate to this, but I'll kind of activate the basic ones, you know, recycling, smoke detectors, free public transit. Why not? You know, we're all about making a good city here. Recreational use. Sure. And uh, go down the line here. Let's see what else there is. A bunch of really random ones. Not going to lie. Educational blimps like what? I don't know. Uh, free Wi-Fi sounds good to me. You know, we have unlimited money here, so money's not an issue at all. So this is kind of the uh, the perfect world scenario, which is cool. <laughs> they, have a, they have a NIMBY one. That's funny. Kind of like how in touch this game is sometimes, not going to lie. Well, we're going to encourage biking because, of course, we are. And, yeah, we'll see what else. I mean, that kind of covers most of it here. There's nothing much, really. Um, maybe, well, that's kind of a given, you know, that do workers unions, boost connections, 
And yeah, that'll probably be good for the policies as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, that about covers it for the first episode. You know, plop some bike lanes here on this road. We'll get way more into that going forward, believe me. Big fan of that. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments what you think. And before that one person comments again, I understand that I say uh, a lot. Believe me, I know. It's just that I'm not quite experienced enough to not say that as much when I'm speaking live. I don't want to just read from a script. It's much more natural that way. So don't worry, I'm going to work on it. Trust me, I swear. But for now, you're going to have to, you know, kind of deal with that a little bit. I'm sorry. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to make another one. See, I just did it again. What are you going to do? I'm, you know, I'm going to be working on this. Hopefully try and do one a week, two a week. I don't know. We'll see. I kind of work a lot. I work like 50 hour weeks. So that sucks. But, you know, in my free time, I'll try and do this as much as I can. Uh, by all means, feel free to submit some interesting things down below. If you've, you know, some interesting discussion topics and whatnot, I'll be happy to discuss things that you guys want to see discussed and talk about kind of all things going on in the world of city planning, which, you know, will be very fun. We'll have this going on in the backdrop. We're going to see how far we can make this go. Building a city without cars. It's an ambitious idea. I think it's going to be a good time, especially in this game. And believe me, I have lots of other ideas going forward too with this. So hopefully you guys like this format a little bit better. I think it's a little bit more bearable to watch, hopefully. And yeah, so thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.